the owner of Red Rooster Custom Baits. Um, we were two and a month, two and a half months old. Uh, started a, as a dream about three years ago, uh, bathed in prayer. And uh, it's been amazing what's happened in these last two and a half months. Uh, it's uh, a project that started by building uh, around a, a hook. And this hook is a must-add wide gap hook. We pour our own heads, we powder coat them, and do our own eyes. Uh, those eyes are painted by hand. Uh, we like to say, welcome to the wide gap experience. I want to show you is uh, one that Craig Miller helped me develop. We're calling uh, this the perch color. Uh, Craig come up with this color, and this is what we tied, and it seems to be doing really well. Uh, we've had a lot of stained water uh, this year, and this this particular fly really works well in stained stained water. I have another fly here I want to show you that uh, one of the local guides, uh, pro guides, uh, that uh, works on Carter's Lake, uh, Louis Bartonfield. This is his design. We're calling this the Carter Special. It's a it's a dun colored duck feather with uh, blue chartreuse and orange hair underneath it. We're very proud uh, of Louie and what he's done with this fly and this is his this is his baby he developed it and we helped him with it and uh, it's done really well on Carter's and we're pr very proud of that. Now this next fly and we're going to tie this one for you today this next fly we're calling this a rainbow shad. Uh, this particular fly uh, we came up with in our mind uh, mimicking an old uh, uh, Bill Norman crankbait. Uh, this was a color that uh, it's one of the old crankbaits had, and we just thought of it, and um, that's how we how we came up with that. Um, another another one of our another one of our, our panfish there. We we call them these panfish spurs. They're our fighting spurs. That's what I call these flies. This is a shell cracker, and we're we're using a light brown duck feather uh, with a baby blue uh, yellow and orange hair under it and we're very proud of, we're very proud of our, our, our shell cracker fly um, there's a number of others um, here's our this is our ghost shad nobody I, I've not seen on the market anybody that ties just a solid white uh, craft hair and this is our ghost this is our ghost shad and then we a spin off of the ghost shad is our copper shad and that's uh, the same the same fly with with uh, copper flash on the top. Uh, oh, and we have one more one more that was really good early on this year. Uh, Craig and I always get this one crossed up. But this is the fall shad. This is the fall shad. This this particular bait early in November helped me uh, put a cull fish in a, a a tournament that we fished early this year when the water temperature really wasn't. Uh, the right floating fly uh, temperature. Okay, so we're going to show you um, the process we go through as we uh, uh, build one of these flies. Now, the craft hair I get from the dugout here, here through Craig Miller, and there's there's different uh, qualities of craft hair, and we try to get the the highest quality of craft hair uh, available. So once we get the first the first bit of of hair situated, we try to make sure that that it's even and situated on the fly whereas we start tying the, the the thread around it that we're trying to keep the bait uh, in a natural even state so we kind of have to manipulate the hair a little bit as we we make our make our our turns with the bobbin and some sometimes the hair will pull out like that and we just we just take it and bring it back on the head and and, and refocus it um, and then we start, after that, we start, we just start building our fly. Um, we go to our next color, which is a chartreuse green. And we tie our chartreuse green. rid of some of this extra hair and we go to our top 
which is the baby blue, and we're making the rainbow shad. This was one of my very first flies that I, that I tied. Um, very proud of how this thing has turned out. Um, I, I know that there's been a, a, a one over four. I think it was close to five pounds at Carter's on this particular fly. Uh, Mr. Bartonfield was uh, the one that was on, uh, on the, the fly rod. And we'll catch the bottom. The orange, you know, always see the oranges. A lot of your, your fish have a, an orange throat. We try to mimic the orange throat. Now at this point, we could add a flash, or some type of flash on the bottom. Um, I didn't bring any today, so we'll just pretend we put the flash and it would also, also load it right under the orange and then make a few, a few turns. Now, what we try to do, um, we file a groove in the neck of the, of the, the fly head to keep the, the thread from slipping. And then the next thing we do is we use a, what a, we call a whip finish tool. And the whip finish tool is this little rascal right here. And this is the animal that we use to ensure that the thread stays where it's supposed to. Now normally I, I think in industry standards they do three, we do five. We pull it down and we cinch, cinch the, this thread is really strong, we cinch it down and then I do another one. So we do five, pull it down, pull it tight, then we snip off our thread and there you have uh, a rainbow shad. Okay, so now we have the, the finished product. I've cleaned the head up uh, with a little X-Acto knife and, and trimmed the hair uh, around the, uh, the thread so here you have a, a finished rainbow shad. And uh, Craig's got a pocket full of them. You need to come up here to the dugout and, and get them. Well, now that we've, um, we've finished uh, showing you guys the finished product, um, I need to share with you my, my mission statement. And uh, that is, um, we're doing this because of what Christ has done for me. And um, I like to think of it as all of us or sailing similar waters. Some of us are in center consoles, some are in big rangers, some are in little uh, trackers with a 40 horse. And some of us are just in rowboats paddling. But our goal is all the same thing and that's to reach the shore safely. But the problem is, is the rocks and the storms of life. Uh, I want to say you got to have a lifesaver and the lifesaver is Jesus Christ. He's been my lifesaver, and I'd love for him to be yours. Our mission statement is we want to take as many of you to heaven with us as we can. Thank you for this time.